This is Bruce Free, the accounting guy again, and today we're going over closing entries. I really hope you enjoyed closing entries as much as I do. I've been wearing my Zen shirt. I've been really getting into it. It's a bright and sunny day outside, and I forgot my regular glasses. You'll just have to put up with me the way I am. But anyway, let's get into the four closing entries. So let's take a look at the closing entries. Now, I want to go back to the original worksheet that we had in the last class. And what I do want to remind you of is that this is really the starting point for our four closing entries. Now, the importance of this worksheet, the other thing that I did not mention the last time that we went over them, was is that the worksheet's importance is, is that once we complete it, we have all of our numbers in one place to complete our financial statements. See, we have this column called the income statement column. And what we're going to do with that is we'll produce an income statement with just these numbers. There's our revenue, there's our expenses. When it comes time to produce our balance sheet, here's all the numbers for our balance sheet. So we have all those numbers also in one place. And when we do our owner's equity, it's all right there. Now, all of these numbers on the income statement and the balance sheet should also match what's in your general ledger because these adjusting entries were not only put up here to adjust these numbers, but these adjusting entries, as we discussed last time, were also placed in the, each, each, um, each um, of the general ledger accounts to adjust the number. So all the numbers at this point in time in your general ledger accounts match these. But now what it's time to do, it's time to start a new year. We've done our income statement, we've done our balance sheet, we've done our owner's equity, and it's time to start over. And what we have to do to do that is, is that we need to... Turn, take all these income statement numbers and turn them back to zero because we want to start accounting for all of our income for the whole year all over again. We want to account for all of our expenses for the whole year over again. So it's almost like, so what the, what the closing entries do is, is they turn all these numbers back to zero. And again, these are, and, and these, and it's just like if you were to go on a trip with your car, you know that you push that little trip odometer and set it back to zero and you, and you track your mileage, just like we're tracking our revenues and expenses for the year. We come to the end of our trip and we want to start over again. We hit that trip odometer again. That's what we need to do here. Now, these accounts here in the income statement column are called temporary accounts because what happens is at the end of the year, we are going to turn them back to zero. They track our information and then we turn them back to zero. These balance sheet items, we do not want to turn back to zero. They're called permanent accounts because if we have $15,200 worth of cash at the end of the year, it's also going to be $15,200 worth of cash the very next day of the beginning of the year. So these are called permanent accounts. We will not turn them back to zero. But how do we go about doing that? Well, the one thing that we do is, is we use closing entries. And so our starting point would be, I always tell students, is take your finger and put it at the top of the income statement pop column and run it down the credit side. And as you can see, we only have one account, but you could have multiple revenue accounts. What do you have to do to all these accounts that are credits to make them turn into zero? And the answer is, is you would have to what? Debit them. So that would be our first adjusting, our first closing entry. I have a general journal here, a uh, similar facsimile here to a general journal. As you can see, I have the account titles and the explanation and the date. And the first thing that I would do then, in this case, we're working as of October 31st, because we're only turning a month, but it could be a year. We put the date and then right next to the margin, because we're going to, everything in the credit column we need to debit. Well, this is a what? This does say service revenue. So we'll debit the service revenue account 10,600 bucks. We'll get back to these numbers right here in a few minutes. But there's the debit of $10,600. And then if I had other accounts that had credits, I would do the exact same thing to those, to those, but I only have one in this case. When we're done listing them out, we would indent and we'll hit income summary for 10,600. Now, income summary is an account. You'll just have to memorize the title. All right. And what I've done is, is we'll credit it 10,600. Now, I've drawn down here a little T account with the name income summary owner. And of course, debits on this side and credits on this. At this point, there would be nothing in it. But our entry credit of 10,600, as you can see, we now have a credit balance of $10,600 in it. 
Okay, that would, would be the amount at this point. And this would actually be physically posted. These entries would be up here, right here, would be physically posted into the general um, ledger accounts. We'd post 10600 into service revenue, and of course now its balance would become zero. And we'd post the 10600 credit in the income summary, and that would be the balance in it. Again, there's the explanation. And these two numbers here are when you post into those accounts, these are the corresponding general ledger account numbers. Remember, whenever you post a number into the actual general ledger account, as your text shows you the entire process, you would come back with the reference, uh, referencing the general ledger account number so that we know we posted it. These tell me that these two numbers, these two amounts have what been physically posted in that ledger account. So again, we do this entry to turn the service revenue back to zero. The second entry we would do to create then would, again, I'd put my finger on income statement, but I'd look at the debit column. And as you can see, I have quite a number of accounts that have debits. And what do I need to do to make all of these accounts zero, the balances in them? Well, of course, I'd have to credit them. So I'd go one by one. I could see I had salaries expense. I would credit it 5200 Rent expense, I would credit it 900. Advertising supplies expense, a credit of 1500. Insurance expense, a credit of 50. Depreciation expense, a credit of 40. Inter uh, interest expense, a credit of 50. And I'd list each one down. Now, as you can see in this next entry I have here on the general journal, and again, remember that when you do have journal entries, you always skip a line between the next entry before you start, all of these accounts, as you can see, have credits. They've been indented away from the margin. They've been, here's the name of the list of the account, just like we had on the worksheet, and here's the dollar amount that was pulled right from the worksheet. Notice my corresponding debit. Um, right next to the margin is income summary again. The purpose of income summary is, is it's a temporary account used just to close all of these accounts to zero. And again, the balance of these is 7,740. Now, if you look up here, these two amounts here are exactly what we've posted now in the income summary, and they should look very similar to two numbers you've already seen right up here on the worksheet. Here's my total expenses, 7,740. Here it is right here. And here's my total revenue of 10,600 on the worksheet, and here it is right here, and we've put them all in one place. When I post these expenses in as credits, of course, now all those expense accounts are zero. And when I post this into income summary, 7,740, here's a T-account analysis of it. I now have that in my income summary account right down here. So again, that's where the accountants really get the title, income summary. It's a summary of our income. Here's our revenue at this point, and here are our expenses and we have them all in one place. And these two postings have been made into this general ledger account, general ledger account called income summary. And by, do, by doing this, we have closed all of our revenue accounts to zero. We've closed all our expense accounts to zero. And we're ready to start the new year with them. But I still have a balance in income summary because, of course, my credit is greater than my debit. And it's no surprise that it is the income of 2860 so my third entry will be to close out income summary by debiting it for $2,860. And that's my third entry. And if we look up here, we'll see the $2,860 debit to income summary right next to that margin. Now, when I do this debit of $2,860, once I post it into the account, that's where the reference comes from, but when I post it in as a debit, then, of course, you can see this income summary account down here becomes zero. And as I said, it was a temporary account. It was a temporary account to close out all of our revenue to zero, our expenses to zero. And now what we're going to do is when we close it out with the amount of net income we have, notice what we credit it into on this journal entry. We indent and we credit CR Bird Capital. Because if you recall, since the very beginning of this course, Revenues and expenses increase and decrease our capital during the course of the year. So that's exactly what we're doing here. We are taking the net effect of the revenues and expenses and putting them into the capital account. 
And again, what that also facilitates by making this entry, let's come all the way back up to this worksheet if we can, here's that 2860 being thrown in here as a credit. That's really what it's representing because see this column was out of balance by 2860 and that represented the income. And by making that journal entry three below, we're taking this 2860 and really throwing it onto this capital account because that is what our capital account is at the end of the year. Okay? However, we have one other item we have to do. We have this drawing account. And in this drawing account, the drawing account is the only temporary account in the balance sheet column. Of course, the, the drawing account keeps track of how much the owner takes out during the course of the year. And when we're at the end of the year, what we want to do is, is we want to turn it back to zero so we can start tracking what they've pulled out also. So what we need to do is realize that drawing really does reduce, if you recall, our equity. So what we're going to do is we're really going to take this 500 and subtract it from this 10,000. But with, and we'll do that with our journal entry down here, which is our fourth closing entry. And when we credit out that CR Burr drawing of 500 and make it zero, we debit it against the CR Bird capital. And of course, we skipped a line, came down to the fourth entry. There's the debit, CR Bird capital 500. There's the credit, CR Bird drawing. Notice everything has a nice explanation. And when we do that final entry, it closes out the drawing account to zero because we'll post that in there. And what it also does is it reduces the capital account by 500. Um, I have an analysis of, the, of that capital account here in, in a T account. Up here is CR Bird Capital. It started off with 10 at the year, beginning of the year or the beginning of the month. This $10,000 capital, which is also on that balance sheet worksheet, that amount will sit there until we do our closing entries at the end of the year. Our closing entries, not only do they reduce they close out the revenue and they close out the expense accounts back to zero, but our closing entries also put in our net income, which was this entry here, and they pull out our drawing, and the net effect is, is we now have a CR Bird Capital of 12360 and if you look at the statement of owner's equity, you will see this is the balance that was shown. This is pretty much a summary of, right here in T-Account analysis, of the equity account. Our capital at the beginning of the year was 10. We added our net income of 2,860, and we subtracted out our drawing of 500 and ended with the 12,360. So in summary, we use this worksheet to create our four closing entries. We close out revenue to income summary to make all our revenue zero. We close out our expenses to income summary to make our expenses zero. And then we close out that temporary income summary account with the net balance, which should always be our net income, to the capital account. And the final entry, close out the drawing and reduce the capital. Those are the four closing entries. You use the general journal to facilitate them, and you use the worksheet to help you create the four closing entries. That's all I have for you today, and I will see you guys real soon.